Hey what's up guys, welcome back to another episode of the Minecraft Survival Let's Play. So in the last episode I got started on the base over here. So I only got the first floor done. I do need to dig this down all the way down to bedrock and build this another four or five times as well. So that's going to be quite a big project. And I'm also going to have to clear out all the land on the sides as well. And that's another big project. It's going to take quite a while to clear all of this land out. So in today's episode what I want to do is build the storage room. So I was going to do this in the last episode, but I just ran out of time. So this is where it's going to go in this side right here. And in the last series, the storage room was right above in the center of the base. And then there was a way from each of the four sides into the center where the storage room is. And I actually changed that just before the world got corrupted. I recorded a YouTube video where I moved all the storage room into the new storage room. But then of course the world got corrupted so I thought it was a little bit pointless uploading that video. And the reason that I moved it is because I had some plans and I was going to keep it there in the centre and build some stuff around it. But I couldn't really make it look good so I decided just to remove it and then build it over here. And I actually liked the base more like that because it was really open. So yeah that's what I'm going to be doing this time just building it in here straight away. So I don't want to waste any more time I'm just going to start mining this place out. And I've already got a design in mind, so I know how much space I need to dig. And I'll be back once I've got the room dug out. Time for a quick update here. So I've dug out the room. You can see this is how big it's going to be. And I've also started building some of the little sections where the chests are going to go. So there's going to be eight of these overall. So there's going to be two in each corner. So two here, two over here, two over here, and then two over here as well. And each one has 25 double chests. And then there's also five barrels down below as well. So overall that's going to be 200 double chests and 40 barrels as well. So some people might think that's a little bit overkill with the storage. But I like to have a lot of storage room with a lot of chests. And this way I just think it's easier to organise everything. Like I see some people who have like 25 double chests in their storage room. And that would just fill up so quickly and everything would start becoming unorganised. So personally I like to have more double chests and that just means everything can be more organised. I can always find exactly where everything is. So that's why I like to have more chests in my storage room. So the plan is to repeat this little section here in all of the other spaces that I've made. And then I've also got these things on the side. So there's one, two, three. Uh, these are going to be some doorways. I'm not entirely sure where they're going to go. I think one of them is going to go to a utility room with like an enchantment table and maybe some grindstones and a few of the other workstations. I think on this side over here I'm going to have a bedroom and then on this side which is opposite the entrance I think this is where I'm going to build another storage room and it's where I'm going to be storing one stack of every single item and I want to build that room as soon as possible really. And then I can start checking some items off the checklist and making some progress towards the series. So I might get that done later on in this episode. But first of all I want to do some more work on the storage room out here. And there's one more thing that I quickly wanted to mention and that is the lighting. So I've got some torches here for now. But the plan for this room and every other room in this base is to have no torches left behind once I've done the project. So I need to find some ways to hide some lighting in these rooms. So that's going to affect the way I need to build them and design them all. And the ways I'm going to hide the light in, in this room is with the trapdoors up here. So I've got some torches up there for now but I'll add some sea lanterns or glowstone later on when I get some. I've also got a little bit of glowstone under here. But I'm kind of running low, I've only got 12 left so I definitely need to go get some more. So on bedrock edition you can hide it underneath stairs like this. I don't think you can do the same on java edition which is a little bit weird. So it is a little bit easier to hide light in on Bedrock Edition because of that. And when I start designing the floor, I'm going to have to use a design with some carpets or something. And then I can hide some glowstone underneath the carpets as well. And that should light up all of the middle section. But anyway, for right now, I'm just going to quickly finish all of the other sections and then get all of the chests in place. And once I've done that, I can start moving all of my items over here. I'm back with another quick update. And you can see that I've got all of the chests in place now. And I've also brought all of the items over from the starter house and put them into the chest. So everything is organised now. So in this corner over here I've got most of the building blocks. So the wood items and then all of the different stone items and dirt and gravel and stuff like that as well. And then I've got more building blocks on this side. So 
So this is for like sand and sandstone. These two columns here are for all of the different nether blocks. So this is the original nether blocks. And then this column is for all of the new ones that were added in the latest update. This column here is for all of the ocean blocks like the prismarine, the dark prismarine and the sea lanterns. And then the final one on this section is for the end stone and all of the other blocks that you can get from the end. If I go over to the next corner, this is for all of the coloured blocks. And they actually don't have many at the moment. But over here I've got the glass and glass panes. And then the wool. And then I'm going to put terracotta and glazed terracotta here. Um, concrete and concrete powder. And then there's something else as well like coral. And I will have to find something else to put in the last two. But this is for all the coloured blocks. The next corner is just for lots of the random items. So I've got a lot of the greenery over here. So there's like saplings and leaves and vines and uh, cactus and all of that stuff. The next two are for mob drops. So there's hostile and then passive. And then I've got food in two of these. So this is for all of the random bits of food in here. And then this is for all of the meat in this column right here. The one on the end is for redstone. I actually don't have much at the moment, but I'm going to be filling that up during the series. And then the three in the middle are just for all of the miscellaneous items. So I've got some ice in there. I'm going to have some TNT. There's some potions, but all of the random items are just going to go in these three chests here, or these three columns of chests. And the last corner is just for the valuables. So this is where I'm going to keep all of the armor and tools, all of the enchanted books, the totems and the horse armor and stuff. And then in here, I'm going to keep all of the ores. I've already got some coal and iron. I don't really have too much of the rest at the moment. But once I've started playing the world a little bit more, I'll be able to fill more of these chests up. Then I've also got some chests left over on this side. And uh, that's just for future updates when more blocks get added. I won't have anywhere to store them, so I'm just going to put them in these chests here. And you probably realise that I've done the floor in here as well. And as I mentioned earlier, I have hidden some lighting underneath carpets. So that keeps most of the place lit up. There's also a little bit hidden here as well. So that keeps the middle lit up. So I don't think anything will spawn on the grey blocks in the middle. But over here to the sides, I've got some stripped oak logs. And it seems a little bit dark if I remove this torch. So I think what I'm going to do is do the roof at some point soon. And I'm going to get a little bit of lighting in the roof. And hopefully that lights up the entire area. Because I really don't want any creepers spawning in here and blowing up the chest. Because that's just going to make a massive mess. And it's going to be a pain to sort out. But I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to get the roof done in this episode. Because there's something else that I want to work on first. So I've gone ahead and built this. And this is the checklist room where I'm going to be keeping one stack of every single item. So I'm sure most of you know this already because I've mentioned it a few times. But my goal for this series is the same as the last series. So I'm going to be attempting to collect one stack of every single item. And this is where all of those items are going to get stored. So each chest is going to have different items inside. And I am going to order these and like split them up into categories and stuff. So once I've collected all of the items that go into one of these chests, so for example, this one here might be called ocean chest or just ocean blocks. So I'll have to collect all of the different prismarine and coral blocks. And once I've collected all of them, I can just go behind here, turn the lamp on like this, and I'll do the same on the other side. And that just lets me know that I've collected all of the blocks for that chest and I don't need to collect any more. So that's a plan and that's why I've got lanterns or lamps at the side of all of the chests. So the next thing I need to do is organise all of these and put all of the items inside that I need to collect for each of the different categories. Luckily I have already done this before on the other world so I have a rough idea of all the different chests and how to split the items up and which items go into each chest. And I'm actually going to do a quick time lapse now where I go and collect one of most of these items. Now that's not going to be possible for every single item because there's just not enough time today. But I'm going to try to collect at least one of them and then I can put it in the chest and that means that I know what goes in that slot in the chest. And the reason for that is just so it's easier to see which items I need to collect for each different chest. So for example if this was the food chest I would have all the different food types in here. And then if I had a cooked beef like this that was only stacked up to one. I could come into this chest and see that it's only stacked up to one. And that means that I know instantly that I need to get another 63 cooked beef. So there's no way that I'm going to be able to collect one of each item in this episode. But I'm just going to roll the time lapse and we'll see how many I can collect.
So that took a lot longer than I was expecting. And I still haven't collected one of every single item that I wanted to collect. But if I go into most of the chests here, like the wood chest, you can see that I've got one of each item at least. So now I know exactly what items I need to collect to complete this chest. And then once I've collected a full stack of every single one of these items, I can go behind and I can turn the lamps on. And that way I know that I've completed that chest. So this is going to be the same for all of them. So once all of these lights are on, I know that I've completed the checklist and I've completed the series. And if I go to a chest like the mob drops, I know I didn't manage to collect all of these items. So instead I've just named a piece of paper for what item goes in that slot. So right here there's going to be a slime ball, a gas tears, a rabbit's foot. So you get the idea. I either put the item there or I've named a piece of paper after the item that goes in each slot. And I'm not going to go through every single chest here. But I will leave a link down in the description to the original video where I created a checklist. So if you want to go check that out you can see all of the different categories. And every single item that I'm going to be collecting for this series. But I'll quickly go through these two chests at the end because these are going to be the hardest two to complete. So first of all is the ores chest. Now everything in here is fairly easy to get apart from the netherite blocks. I think that's actually going to be the second hardest item to collect in the entire series. And a few people probably think it's going to be the hardest item to collect. But the hardest one to collect is going to be the notch apples. So the enchanted apples, they're extremely rare to get and I need to get 65 of them overall. Because I also need one to make a banner. And the other items in this chest are the ones that you can see. Plus the creeper, zombie and skeleton head which you need to get with a charged creeper. And then also a conduit and heart of the sea. Those aren't too hard to get, it's just a lot of exploring the world. But the enchanted apples are definitely going to be the hardest item to collect in this series. And there's one more thing that I want to do before I end today's video. So I want to complete one of these chests and turn one of the lamps on. So the chest that I chose is the tools and armour. So I've pretty much collected most of this stuff. I just need to get a full set of neverite stuff at the top. And then I also need some chain mail here. So a chain mail chest plate and also the leggings. So I can get that from trading with villagers. And I'm going to go on a quick neverite hunt. And hopefully I can get enough to complete the set. I've got the first villager trapped here. And I've got the chest plate trade. So four emeralds for a chain mail chest plate. So I've already got one. And now I just need to go and get the leggings. And the second villager that I've got here is giving me the leggings trade. So three emeralds for the leggings, I'm going to get these and I can go and add them to the checklist. Next up I need to go get some more neverite and usually I would just do this in a time lapse. But I get quite a lot of comments mostly over on TikTok from people that don't know how to get neverite very efficiently. Or they'll message me saying that they think I'm cheating because I can get 40 ancient debris in like 20 or 30 minutes. And it takes them days to get that much. So I'm just going to go through my methods and how I do it. I have done this before on the other world, but just in case anyone didn't see that and you still struggle to get it, I'll show how I do it and I can usually get about 30 to 40 in about 20 to 30 minutes, which I think is quite efficient. So this is the tunnel that I've been using so far and there's actually three different tunnels connected here. So this is the first one down here. The second one is 10 blocks across, which is down here. And then the other one is 10 blocks across again, which is down here. So even though it looks like one big tunnel, it's actually three that are connected together. So now I'm going to come to the end. So this is the centre of the final tunnel. So I'm going to count from this block and go over 10. So this is block number one. So this is the 10th block right here. And now I'm just going to go in this direction. So if you look at the coordinates at the top, the first coordinate is going up and down when I go like this. So it's on 128. And what I've been doing is digging out to 500 so if i go in this direction it goes up then i'm just going to keep digging until that first coordinate is 500 and i've actually already found a piece just from digging in a straight line and i'll quickly just break a few bits around and there's another piece here so it looks like a vein of two so before i've even started with the tnt i've already found two pieces and there's another piece right here as well and i'll quickly break around it and there's another piece i think that's another vein of two so that's four pieces already and I'm only like halfway to the end. So it doesn't take long to tear through all of this never rack. It's pretty easy. There's actually another ancient debris right here. And we'll break a little bit more. It doesn't look like there's any more around here. So 
So I'm at the end now, 500 if you look at the first coordinate. So now if I dig across here a little bit, it should bump into the other tunnel. So I'm not going to go out there, but this is the end of the last tunnel. So I've been doing this the same distance for each of the different tunnels now. So next up, I'm just going to get the TNT and I'm going to place it all the way down the tunnel to the beginning. So there's not really any specific way to do this, but I tried to leave like a two gap in between all of them. Sometimes there's a three gap or a four gap or a one gap. But as long as it's about two for every single one, it should be okay. And for a tunnel this big, I would usually use two and a half stack TNT. So I brought three stacks and that should be plenty. So I made it all the way back to the start of the tunnel. And you can see that I've got about half a stack of TNT left. So like I said, I used about two and a half stacks for each of these different tunnels. And now I can start blowing this up. So I could use flint and steel, but I like to use a flame bow instead. I think it's just easier because you can shoot the TNT from a distance. So I'm going to shoot this first one and I'm just going to get out of the way. So it's blown up the first few and for some reason on Bedrock Edition, it's kind of hard to start a chain reaction with TNT. If I shoot this one here, it will blow up. Oh, that one's actually going to fall down, so I'll shoot the next one. But it's going to blow up, but it won't start a chain reaction. It might blow up like the next four or five, but then it will stop pretty soon. You can see, so it's kind of hard to start a chain reaction on Bedrock Edition. And that's why I like to carry a flame bow instead. So I'm going to make my way down the tunnel blowing up all of the TNT. And while I'm doing this, I'm just going to cover up all of the lava as well. And this is just in case it covers up any of the ancient debris. Like you don't want to lose out on any. So cover up all of the lava. And then you can collect all of the ancient debris while you're going as well. So I'm going to do this all the way down to the end of the tunnel. And of course I'm going to collect all of the ancient debris on the way. I've made it all the way down to the end here. And I found the last two ancient debris. So I'm going to collect both of these. But collecting Neverite is just based on luck really. Sometimes I could do a tunnel this big and I could get 50 to 60 ancient debris. And then other times like today I can do this the exact same size and only get 22. So it's just based on luck really. Just like when you go to find diamonds. So I'm hoping 22 is enough to create the full set of armour and tools that I need. I do actually have some more back at the base or inside my ender chest. So I'm hoping I've got enough. I'm kind of running out of time at the moment, so I'm not going to have time to come get some more. These tunnels are actually very useful for resources as well. So I usually collect all the quartz that are at a decent height. I don't really bother climbing up to the roof to get the ones from the roof. But all the ones down on the floor, I get them. And then there's also a lot of blackstone, so if I ever need this, I can always just come back over here. And there's plenty of blackstone to get as well. So I'm just walking back down the tunnel. And I've actually realised that I've missed an ancient debris up here. I'm just going to climb up and get this. And hopefully it's a two or three vein. So it was just a one vein. But that's why I walk down a tunnel slowly after I've done. So I'm just going to look around and make sure that I didn't miss any more. I think I managed to get all of it now. So 23 overall. Like I said, isn't a great return. But it's better than nothing. And usually I would get more than that in the other sessions. I just think I got a little bit unlucky today. And one thing that I forgot to mention is that I do this on Y level 15. So a while ago I asked the comment section which level is the best to do it on. And I used to do it a little bit lower on Y level 13. But a lot of people suggested doing it on Y level 15 instead. So I started doing it on this level. And I think it is definitely more efficient. So I'm done in the nether for now. I'm just going to head back to the base. And I'm going to get this netherite smelted up. I've started smelting the netherite. And I've actually got three ingots and two scrap already from other episodes. So hopefully it's going to be enough overall. But I'm just coming over here to the villagers. And I'm going to collect one of all the different diamond tools. So I can just trade these from the villagers pretty easily. And it just saves me the diamonds. So I've actually got just enough netherite to turn all of this into netherite gear. There's nine pieces overall. And if I make one more ingot, that is nine netherite ingots. So luckily I've only just managed to get enough. So I'm quickly turning all of this into netherite. And then I can go up to this chest right here. I've already put the chainmail stuff in. So I can just put this in, in this order. So the armor first, and then the sword, pickaxe, axe, shovel, and then the hoe at the end. So this is the first chest that is completed in the checklist room. So I can actually just head behind here and I've already got the levers on the wall. So I can just turn the light on on both sides. Then I can cover this back up and that just lets me know that this chest is completed so I don't need to add any more items to that. 
So obviously there's still a long way to go here. There's still a lot more items to collect and a lot more lights to check off. But I'm quite happy just to finally get this storage room set up. And it's going to help me a lot in my future episodes. Just to decide what I'm going to do in that episode. So for each video I'm going to try to focus on collecting a few of the different items. So I might go to a chest like the ocean chest. And see that I need some prismarine. So for that episode I might build a prismarine farm. And maybe even a farm to get the coral and stuff as well. So it just helps me to decide what videos I'm going to be making in the future. And it also just helps me know what items I need to collect. And of course there's still a lot more work to do with the decorating as well. Like I said, I probably will do this in between episodes. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do. And if anyone watched my other series, you'll know that I just hated doing the ceilings. For some reason, I liked doing the walls and the floors. But whenever it came to ceilings, I just didn't know what to do. So it's going to take me a while to come up with a design for this because it's quite a big area. But hopefully I can come up with a nice design and make this place look a lot better because it's kind of ugly at the moment with the dirt in the floor and stuff. I definitely need to spend a lot of time decorating. But anyway, that is going to be the end of today's episode. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to be doing in the next video. I've got two ideas and I'm not sure which one I'm going to do first. But one of them is the Q&A. So that's either going to be out next week or the week after. So I know a few people are looking forward to that. But anyway, like I said, this is going to be the end of today's episode. I've just run out of time to record, so I need to edit this video tonight and get it up for tomorrow. So I hope everyone enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.